had a request by a very good friend of the channel to do a run through with this track. This is a tone poem entitled This is the Garden. And he wanted to know a little bit about what was going on underneath. So I haven't looked at this one in a while. It'll be interesting for me to see what's going on and how much I've changed in the way I do things. So right off the bat, we have, uh, I do uh, stacks of tracks here in the orchestral section. So uh, looks like we have a flute trill, some two different kinds of flute trills. And that's all those guys are doing. Then we have a uh, bass flute, two different kinds of bass flute. So a very uh, calm kind of uh, perfect interval line. These uh, software instruments are all from Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Pro Edition. Gives you a lot of uh, a lot of options. Here are some clarinets, evidently. oboes and double reeds so it looks like uh, bass clarinet and oboes and let's see down further so I'll close this stack so stacks in logic are a way of getting groups of instruments together but then minimizing them in your window makes it a lot easier. So it looks like we have a violin, violas, cello, another kind of cello, and eventually a bass here. It's kind of some underpinning there and what then we have here is from the Bernard Herrmann composers toolkit collection uh, looks like a couple of different this might be the bells uh, not sure what's coming up here some reinforcement flutes and full full orchestra playing spread chords. Yeah, playing, so just underpin, underpinning with solid kind of intervals. You can see here the uh, expression's been written in, so dynamic swells, and uh, it's generally loud at the beginning getting softer and loud again getting softer generally. Uh, let's see here. We, I know we have percussion, so I'll close this stack, and I'll close the string stack so it's a little easier to see. Open up the percussion, and it looks like bells. So cymbals, triangle, tambourine, and a timpani eventually, looks like. Oh, no timpani. Maybe we get... Uh... 
No harp out here. Harp, harp and tam tam. Did not know. So that carries uh, the orchestral bunch. I'm going to close that stack. And then we get into the guitars. So this is quite a common way for me to do things where things are divided up to where let's I'll start right here. So this is one single lead line in the guitars, pretty sure. That's been I'm guessing I think it's doubled. Yeah. So this is guitar going into Universal Audio uh, Ruby plugin or Ruby pedal that acts as an amp. And uh, you can hear, I've also running probably the JHS AT distortion. And uh, you can hear Ebo on here as well is sustaining the thing. So I'm probably picking it, holding the Ebo and then bringing the Ebo in. Yep. And let's see. So these things are chords. So usually what happens is is that well, I'll, I'll try all of these at once and see what they're doing uh, I have a feeling these are chords nice. so that is most likely chords with the Digitech freakout sustaining things afterwards best I can tell I think that's Ebo with the Cloudburst reverb from Strymon on the mezzo piano setting. So it creates a little a bit of an orchestral sound. So if you stack enough of those up. So they're counter melodies here. There's this one. With the sustain. And that meets this one. And then this is what? So I'm thinking in ranges here where there's something in the middle, something up high, something lower. And you get that. And that's just going to hold. Eventually, we're going to get the next bunch. Somebody's sustaining. Somebody's sustaining all the way through. It's a lot of sustain. I might be able to hear the Boss Dimension D chorus in here too on some of those guitars. So the lead parts then are just these. Sorry. Right there, I hope you can hear that before these guys were finished, this came in. 
and and these two continued overlapping <laughs> So actually quite distorted, and I'll usually play these separately to get a little bit of variance between lead lines. Then we get key change. So, so this is something I really like doing. It's a, a way of using the pick. Say if you have a Herco or a Dunlop that has some little nubs on it. You can turn it around and use the shoulder of the pick and get this really pronounced attack. Uh, sorry. So I got that sound from listening to Jimmy Page with Led Zeppelin on a song called T for One from Presence. And that album's been my favorite since it came out ages ago. My favorite Zeppelin album. And uh, he really leans into that Herco, Herco pick, uh, harsh attack right at the beginning, that scratchy thing. I really like it. So this is my common thing to do, which is a little bit uh, leaning into what Tom Scholes would do with Boston, which is any significant melodic line is, it's actually Brian May of Queen too, mostly, but uh, any melodic line is at least doubled in a different register. So in this case, we have things that are an octave apart. I think of them more as it's a cello and a violin or a cello and viola line. So these two. And then somewhere in here we get this little extra guy at the end, a little tag maybe. I don't know. Well, I guess I wanted that. I cut and paste. Uh, I cut some of this off and put it here so that it would sustain through the ending and I could sustain all of the orchestral parts longer. Uh, I know for sure this piece started off as an orchestral piece and I just had that little intro and didn't know where to go and then uh, had the idea of opening up a bunch of guitar parts and seeing what I could do. Looking down here at the mixer, this is not at all how I would do it these days. Not a bit. So nowadays I would take all of the chordal parts and uh, go no output and these would become uh, a guitar bus shows up here. I would add a gain plugin and some other things and some effects to bus. So it looks like here I was doing it with uh, all the effects up front in my recording chain. So it's doing that thing of, uh, sorry, yeah, of uh, putting the effects prior to recording, so printing the effects. Uh, nowadays, I do it far differently in as much as uh, if I open up this most recent one. So you'll see that uh, it'll take a second to load because there's so many instances of Amplitude 5 here. This will give an indication of... This is a new one called... Uh, the essence of this motion. And having done many, many titles 
taken from E.E. E. Cummings' poems. I'm now on Rainer Maria Rilke for, for titles t taken from his poems, where I just open them up and find a line that I like. So here you see my more recent setup where, say, these guitars number three here, there's no output. They're all bust somewhere. They're bust here. Then I have a gain plug-in, a channel EQ if I need it, and uh, a bit of extra EQ with this Soothe 2 plug-in, which is quite nice. And then we have three buses for just Guitar 3, which are the short reverb, long reverb, and a delay. And uh, you can see sometimes I have them uh, straight up at unity at zero and then sometimes I have them really low so minus 17.8 I didn't want much delay on this one so uh, using the Relab the LX 480 essentials it's a lexicon style plugin I think you can get it for $29 and it's really great and then I'm using a free copy right now a demo copy of this uh, Eventide Newfangled Audio Recirculate Delay, which has quite a lot of options, and it's interesting. I'm not quite sure I'll get it for myself after the demo runs out. But anyway, that's what's happening these days, where all of these different guitar parts, many, many guitar parts, uh, all are getting their own amp, and I set them differently if need be, set the tones and whatnot. This is Amplitude 5, by the way. Um, so you can change the kind of amp you use. I'm running a little noise gate and a compressor. Uh, you can pick the kind of cab you want, where the mics are. And it's a really versatile system. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So I'll close here. I hope this has been of some interest to someone. And uh, I enjoy doing these things. So if you have other requests, please do let me know. And I wish you, as always, a very good day.